Hello, welcome to Happy Massa, a special live edition with Tony and Caroline. And today we are, well, it's about the World Cup football, football challenges and finding the maths in football. So every Monday, five o'clock, we do our live session well, or recording. You, there is a happy mass hour every Monday. And we are taking advantage of the World Cup to look at football. Tony, are you ready? Yes. Now, here's the question. Where's the maths in football? And we thought that because this is the end, near the end of term, um, teachers would be really happy to see some activities that they can give their children to do in, in class but relate to football. Everybody at them, well, a lot of people, most people at the moment are interested in football. In this picture, what maths do you see in that, Caroline? Well, I see lots of hexagons that tessellate. That's the I, net. That's the net. I can see, I, I'm, I'm fixated on the direction all the footballers are looking. So you can, even if the ball were missing from the picture, I think you could play a, a game where you could guess where the football is. And what else I see? I, I think about how many people there are in the stadium. I think about how far, I suppose people that know how big a football pitch is would just know, but you can still estimate how far it is between the goalposts, between the goals. I'm also seeing I'm also seeing that this is an action photograph and um, the fo the footballer um, has just kicked the ball it's coming towards the goal and the goalie is now diving to save the goal um, but the maths that's going on in the brains of those footballers is amazing they're not consciously thinking about speed and distance um, and uh, angle and but their brains are doing the maths and, and and coming up with it i thought we might start looking at this problem about this particular stadium that was built for the 2010 world cup in south africa at that time spain beat the netherlands um, who's going to win this time, do you think, Caroline? <laughs> Almost certainly not England, let's put it that way. <laughs> oh dear, you're one of those people who say that France is going to beat England and that'll be the end of our, end of our story. Sorry. What happens is England ends up with a tie and then England, when it comes to breaking the, the winner with the tie, England just doesn't do it so maybe to this year will be the exception i mean it's well, been how got, many years they've it's gone been... through to the quarterfinals well, anyway, been there, done that. here's a diagram <laughs> for you can you make sense of it what it is is a football pitch um caroline did you did you bring your little demo um here we go so um the, can you turn it round, caroline uh, uh, so that Yes, that's right. Right, no, no, another 90 degrees. Now, if you uh, make the triangle, uh, fold it along the edge PC so that the triangle, the top of the triangle, not flat, Caroline, it's meant to show what this diagram shows. Oh, right. So, so I, I need it, I need it that way again. The vertex is supposed to be directly above above there you go the vertex is supposed to be directly above the center of the pitch i was doing it the other way around because it because the image is inverted so i was i was yeah i'm there okay. i'm there so i'm there I so this, it, is the... this flap this triangular flap um was flat and caroline has um folded it up to show the vertex vertically above the middle of the pitch and to show that you've got a right angle triangle PAC and another right angle triangle CAM and with some calculations there's a picture of the what Caroline's using the model she's using and the um, 
Yes, and, with, and by scale drawing, you can answer all those questions. Um, or you can use trigonometry if you That's want to That's what get... I really like about this. Yes. Yeah, but you've got to... a lot of people uh, maybe have forgotten about trigonometry. And so what I really like about this is that you really can do this just by measuring, just by scale drawing, and you can find the solutions. And um, so... So it, it, it's a suitable, it uh, it's a suitable exercise for younger learners or older. Now I found these pictures of the um, stadiums that Qatar has built. Aren't they beautiful? And why are they, they beautiful? Are yes, and it's a view that these are views that not many people get because you've got to be. Um, up in the air, you <laughs> haven't you, <laughs> just to see them from the angles that you see them now. Um, You've got the they... minimal surfaces on the Al Bayt Stadium. You've kind of got the minimal surfaces on the on the on the roof. Mm. And the bubble effect with the curvy. Mm. Mm. And, and you've got you put... triangles and and, and um, trapezia on the Education City Stadium. And they are all um, different. They're all, I mean, imagine the maths that went into the work of designing them to get all the proportions right and the symmetries and um, the shapes. Uh, they, they're, they're absolutely beautiful. Um, I and found the project out planning, not, not just designing them, but then actually working out what is required to build them all the project planning or what equipment, how much equipment, how many people, and, and they're getting the times right, getting it ready on time. Absolutely. Oh, and I hadn't noticed the, the shapes on the base of the Al Tumama Stadium, you've got the circular cylindrical stadium. And then on the outside, you've got all those quadrilaterals or not quite sure. They, they look like they're intersecting quadrilaterals from here mm. on the outside. Hmm. Now this is interesting. The nine nine hundred seventy four stadium. I wondered why that was the name of it, and that's because it's the dialing the telephone dialing code for Qatar. Oh. But it's made of nine hundred seventy four shipping containers. I love all the colours in it, and it's going to be dismantled after the World Cup, and the components will be reused. Now, isn't that clever? I think that's fascinating. That's... What an amazing idea somebody somebody <laughs> had somewhere along the lines like, oh, why don't we build it out of shipping containers and then reuse it? <laughs> okay, let's do it. <laughs> and this is also interesting. This Al Tumana uh, uh, Stadium, um, the shape is inspired by this cap, which is which is called a kafia, which is part of the Arab headdress. Mm. So they put the cloth on their heads and they put the cap on to hold it in place. And then there's a bun that they tie round, I think. I got it right. But the word kafia also refers to a form um, of Persian poetry. And it's very significant in the Arab culture. So that's why that stadium was designed uh, to be circular and to be that in that pattern isn't that interesting and, and i just thought the the, the rectangles or whatever the shapes are on the bit on the base and around it that's um reminiscent of the the arabic um geometry in the alhambra and well basically all the buildings mm. the mm -hmm. geometric shapes in that decorate the buildings We've done that on the grounds of the stadium. Yes, it's, I think those are stunning pictures. So what's going to happen after the World Cup is that the stadiums will be modified to provide facilities for other sports as well as football. And the, to make way for that, some of the seats will be moved out. So, for example, the Education City Stadium will become a sports complex it's called Education City because it's in the um, area in Doha where there are three universities. 
So the new sports complex will have facilities to serve the students in the area. And the LaSalle Stadium will become a community centre. And around 174,000 seats will be disassembled and sent all over the world to developing nations to help them to develop their sports infrastructure. Okay. So that 22 new stadiums will be created in emerging economies. And this configuration will leave Qatar with stadiums with between 22 and 25,000 seats, which is suitable for all domestic needs. I think when you see those facts and you look at those beautiful um, stadiums, which people are watching the games in, um, really Qatar deserves more praise and more, you know, great thanks really from the rest of the world. Um, and it seems all... You know, looking at the news, they've received nothing but criticism, which is such a I shame. Suppose, yes, it, it is a the, the 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 bad has outweighed the good in this instance. That there's still lots of people watching. So, well, it 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 um, it's a, getting a sense of proportion, isn't it? Mm -hmm. But the fact that it, this is the this is going to develop to help developing countries um, is is good. It seems to me. So. Okay, so here's another problem. Um, now, this this was the original um, lineup of 32 teams that uh, started, and now, of course, we're down to the 16. In fact, some of those 16 teams have already been um, uh, knocked out. Okay, so there's... How many teams qualified for the last 16? Um, well, these are the, no, not how, not how many. These are the teams. So England has just played Senegal, um, and then we'll go on to play France. And I don't remember who's playing who in the next few weeks, but but by I oh know the next week, but by Friday, these 16 will be reduced to eight. So now in the group rounds, each team plays all the other teams in their group and they play them once. So two teams from each group qualify. So how, how many games are there in the knockout rounds, Caroline? Can you work that out? Right. So each team has to play each other. So that's three. But, and then... And then that team plays two, so that's one, that's six, I think. So that's six times one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Six, eight, oh, are 48. 48. Yes, well, what we have is that each team plays all the other teams. And so that it, so in that group, so the four teams play the other three, which makes twelve, and you get six because when you say four times three, it counts the same game for both teams, and so that's why you get six. Um, and in the knockouts, in the knockout. Well, we'll come to that in a minute, and um, and how many games there are in in the tournament, and this diagram might help it might not is it a good chart Mat doing maths we use charts to to, um, to illustrate um, to convey information in a way that it's perhaps easier than just reading text the question is is this a good is it a good chart is it misleading um well that's that's really i looked at it and i thought wow this is brilliant and then I tried to work out certain things from it. And then I got completely, oh, my goodness, it doesn't show me. It doesn't show me clearly what's going to be happening. Um, just talking, Caroline, about whether this is a good chart or not. Um, 
so it, everything got started on the 30th, uh, on the 20th of November. That was from the 20th of November. But, um, and the quarterfinals will be um, from the um, 9th of December. That's Friday. At the moment, we're in in the round of 16. And this, this week, we're in the round of 16. But it appears here... Um, as if the two teams um, that come from group, um, the group where England is at the top, somehow seem to play each other. Well, we know they didn't. We know that England um, played Senegal. So this fork, um, these these eight forks, I think, are quite confusing. I, yeah, to, it, it implies what we're looking at here implies that the quarterfinals, that there's two teams from each of the groups make it into the quarterfinals. And then the semifinals is two of those. So it's only between those four. Possibilities are only between those four. And it's not that at all. Well, that so, is what happens, isn't it? Because um, the two teams who... who um, is that is that right? The two teams, they don't play each other, but they play other teams. Yeah, but they don't play each other, and this does imply that they play each other. It sort of suggests that, yes, yes. Anyway, uh, I thought that was a good somebody's good attempt to show how the process works. It's certainly um, structured, but I, I suppose it just it they, they shouldn't be. Maybe they should be at the top. Maybe the the eight the eight groups should be above. And then have the chart below, so that it didn't doesn't. But then, the, then there would be a. I think that would be better, and then there might be a crossover, and it, it go yeah, down. Exactly, you yeah. could then have arrows pointing down. Mm -hmm. So we've, so we've got a comment, Tony. A question: Is England this, that that's got to be an opinion? Is England going to take it this time? And what is the percentage? Well, my my, I'm afraid I'm going to be very. I'm going to say West Ham isn't doesn't have enough players playing, so we're not going to win. Oh, Caroline. <laughs> oh, dear. No, no. I, I, you know, I find myself very conflicted here. I almost wanted to cheer for Senegal last night when they were playing because rather than England, because Senegal were the underdog and I like to support the, the underdog. I Always cheer the underdog. I was rooting for South Africa, and it was there. I was rooting for Iceland that year. Oh my goodness, they put up such a, a brave show. Senegal, I'm always cheering for the underdog. I wanted Senegal to get at least one goal. <laughs> that that must have been really disappointing for them to, for it to be zero. Uh, so yeah. then, what's going to what's happening now is that um, two teams from each group. Um, are involved so there are 16 teams the 16 teams are playing the, this round of 16 and then eight of them will go through to the quarterfinals there'll be four games in the quarterfinals and four teams will go through to the semi-finals um, and then two teams to the finals and then there'll be another match um, after that, um, to um, or before the final, I, I'm not sure when it happens. That we'll decide third uh, third place. So there are. Um, so this is how many you get. Um, there are 16 teams, and 15 must be knocked out. This is two methods of doing this. 15 must be knocked out to determine the winner. So. Um, that means 15 games with one team knocked out each time and there's also a game to determine third place. That's 15 plus one is 16 games. Now, that's the other way. Does, which way seems better to you, Caroline, of these two methods of working out how many games? Um I, I like the one, the, I like method two purely because I can follow it. I can follow it step by step. I like that. It works with the, with the way my brain works. 
I, like, I also like the logic that there are 16 teams and 50 must be knocked out. Um, and then you've got the extra game. But I would have to really think about that carefully and make sure I'd have to go back and really basically do method two so that I was sure that I got method one right. So maybe a combination of them both. One checks the other. <laughs> So you've got 48 games in the group's rounds and then 16 making 64 altogether. How about this, Caroline? Have you got your ball handy? I do, I do, I do. Get ready to see the bucky ball. Now, of course, this isn't the start the design of balls that balls that are used in the World Cup, but it's a, the classic common football. And uh, Caroline made it from this uh, net that you see on the screen. Isn't it beautiful? It's lovely. I feel like putting something inside because it's quite, it's quite delicate. You cannot have, I've had to pull out a couple of the, the flaps. It's all taped together. But I feel like putting something inside so I can actually keep it and it will last. Because <laughs> mm -hmm. as long as nobody touches it, it's all right, but you're definitely not something you can have rough people playing with because they'll squish it. Um, but you can you can make it and then just put it on top of something, which I will be doing. And I, I really well, like that. I treasure that. It's made with quite thin card, isn't it? Well, um, I just use, I just use normal paper. So if I'd made it with card, it would be a lot more substantial. And this is what we call a. An inflated the the football itself is an inflated truncated icosahedron. So now that's, that's a mouthful. Can you say that three times in a hurry, Tony? <laughs> inflated truncated icosahedron. Inflated. Oh, <laughs> you can <laughs> too. <laughs> and now it's also called a bucky ball because it's named after Bucks, Buckminster Fullerene. And he is a, was a, a scientist and a builder who... Buckminster Fuller, it's Buckminster Fuller. It's a Fuller. Buckminster yes. Fullerene. Fullerene was, the, was the, carbon, um, the carbon atom that he identified, wasn't it? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And anyway... Um, and then, yeah, it's a carbon, carbon 60 molecule, which... And, and, yeah, and, the, and the geometric shape, also, they named the buck Mr. Fullerene, as in in maths, and then the football is yeah, I like it, inflated truncated icosahedra. But why on earth is it a truncated icosahedra? And surely that's not the name of that. It's the football, right? Or a carbon sixty <laughs> molecule. Well, why why do we use it, icosahedra? Before it was inflated, uh, before it was inflated, you see <laughs> the two pictures of the black and white pictures. The actual dodec, uh, the actual um, polyhedron on the left, and then how it's inflated air in it makes. Oh, it I can see the inflated part. What I'm intrigued about why it's a truncated icosahedron. It doesn't look like an icosahedron. Well. Let's first of all, let's come back to that question. Let's count the faces. And if you count the faces, you have got 12 pentagons, the red oh, one. Yeah, no, I, but so now I can use the other method that you used. I've got two, two hexagons in each column. So two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. So that's two times 10. And then, and then yeah, there's 12 12 pentagons that's quite easy to to count on i tell you what tony counting them nice and flat like that is so easy you attempt to count them when you're actually going round and round a bucky ball <laughs> it's a very very different matter now how many edges are there um well there are <clears throat> 20 hexagons each with six edges that would make 100 and 620 is 120 edges. Right, yeah. So that's, okay, yeah, I get, I've got that. Six times goes, 20, there are yeah. five of them. That would make 60 edges. And adding those up, that would be 180. But then each edge, or, or two um, flat faces, is, is joined to the edge of another flat face. So we've got to divide by two to get 90. Yeah, every edge has two faces. Yeah, I can see that. 
So similarly, when we count vertices, there's six vertices to each hexagon and five to each pentagon. So there's 120, but each one is counted three times because there's three faces meet at each vertex. So let's let's just check that. I've got a vertex there. I've got one, two, three. So each vertex has one pentagon and two hexagons. That makes three, of course. And they're all exactly the same. Every vertex has two, one pentagon and two hexagons. So yeah, there's three. Yep, I, I'm, I concur. Right. And if we add the number of faces and the number of vertices and then subtract the number of edges, we will get um, 32 plus 60 is 92 minus 90, and the answer is 2. And if we count faces, edges, and vertices for any polyhedra, we'll and do that calculation at the bottom of the screen here, we'll always get 2. Um, that's Euler's formula, Euler's constant. So let's look at the icosahedron. And Let's look to see what happens. Now, the icosahedron has got 20 faces. That's the icos okay. word means 20. Yeah. It's also got 30 edges and 12 vertices. So, so the icosahedron is the one on the left that's got all lots and lots of triangles. It's got like three, four, five, Each six, seven, eight, nine. It's got nine triangles on every face. That's the icosahedron. It's made up of 20 triangles, right? On the left. I'm going to see why I have put nine triangles on every face here, because we're now going to imagine ourselves with a knife cutting off pieces of that icosahedron and producing the shape on the right. Okay, so I can see on every vertex, you can actually see the shape of a pentagon just under it. So you're actually cutting off a pentagonal pyramid off of every vertex. Yes, there you are. Right. Red lines show the cuts. And when you do that cut and pick off these um, 12 pentagons, you, you have left a flat area well if you're working with something solid <laughs> you've got to be solid um then you're you're left with the, the flat pentagonal face which is in red on the picture on the right so that truncated means cut off and you see that each pentagonal face is surrounded by five hexagonal um faces and in the original icosahedron, the, th the, th the three of the triangles you see at the, at the vertices, they are uh, they're, they're the cut lines that you cut when you cut off the pentagon. Yeah. Flat, the, the other six triangles making the hexagon, you see there were nine on the um, face of the icosahedron. So the th three of them belong in the pentagonal pyramid that's cut off, and six of them are on the flat face, which becomes the hexagonal face of the buckyball. Right. Yeah, I, I can see that. So, yeah, you started with nine, and you've cut, literally cut three off every face, and that leaves six, which is, and that's regular. They're all the same. They're all equilateral. So that leaves you with a hexagon on every face, apart from the face that's been cut off. Cool. Cool, yes. Now, here, um, we've got some results, and the puzzle is um, which chart, there are six charts, okay. Now, number one me mentions beta rovers, and number three mentions Alpha United, but numbers two, four, and five, and six don't mention which team. So the puzzle is, you know, that three of these charts or um, pieces of information refer to Alpha United and three refer to Beta Rovers, but which is which? Okay. So you've got to pick out pairs 
and put them together. And then if we're going to find out which is which, it seems you've got to work out, well, the learners, if you do this, if you're a teacher and you're going to offer them this in a, in a lesson this week, um, then they need to work out mean, median and mode. So it's a good incentive to work out the averages, the three averages, mean, median and mode. Right. So by working out the mean, median and mode, you can identify which of those charts refers to beta rovers and which of the charts refers to Alpha United. Indeed. But it's such a nice little puzzle then. It's like a mix and match, but you've got to work out the, the averages in order to, to, to complete it. Yes. So you can you should be able to see which is the mode. What's the mode in the pie chart? Which the mode is, in the pie chart is one goal. And what's the mode in the um, pictogram? The pictogram, let me see, the one with most. So I've got there's one with two and a half footballs and that's three goals. So the mode in the, in the pictogram is three goals. Yes. Um, and so... Uh, the pie chart and the pictogram must refer to different sets of results. Yeah, that's right. Yes. Oh, my. Yeah, because the pie chart, the biggest section is the one goal section, whereas in the pictogram, the biggest section is the three goals, the, the two and a half. What, the how many goals? That must be, yeah, sorry, the three goals section, which is two and a half max. So which which um which of the frequency look at the frequency chart now and mm -hmm. the tally chart numbers five and six which shows a mode of one goal and which shows a mode of three goals right so the frequency chart the mode is mode being the one that occurs most often is the is one because that scores six um six matches with one goal and that would then match the pie chart because that's the biggest. And that, and yeah, it tells you the one goal is the biggest section. And then, and then you look at the tally chart and that shows you that the most amount of goals is five and that matches the pictogram. Okay, so we, we, at least we know which, which two charts Work, so um, if, match each other. If your class were trying to do what Caroline and I are talking about, they'd already have revised and recalled and, and reminded themselves each other of what I mean what at least what now what the mode is, and you're part way there. So we've decided that the tally chart and the pictogram both represent the same data. And the children can work out the mean. The mode we've decided, we saw that immediately, was three. And to get the median, you have to list the um, occurrences. Uh, zero happens three times, one happens three times, two goals happens twice. You've got to list them in order and find the one in the middle. That's the median. So... Oh. Um, it, so we won't work out. We won't calculate oh. the the mean. Often oh, well, you can see that you can see in the like kind of the old fashioned way, the way you learn in primary school, isn't it? The median goals you've actually listed them all out. Yes, but the mean you have to work out the total number of goals, which is thirty, and divide it by fifteen, which is the total number of matches. So it's the mean is two goals per match. So is it? Does that relate to Alpha United or Beta Rovers? The, let's see. The mode, the, the mode number of goals scored by Alpha United is one more than the mean number of goals they scored. So the, the mode, it certainly is true for, no, the mean. Yes, this is true for Alpha United. What about for Beta Rovers? The mode of the number of goals scored is one less than the mean. So that is not. So it must no, be Alpha United. Must be Alpha United, yeah. There's a summary of the results for Alpha United. And uh, then for the other team, this must be Beta Rovers, you do the same thing. Here, again, when you work it out, you've got 30 goals scored altogether in 15 matches so the mean is the same it's two two goals per match but now the mode is one which is one less than the mean and it's beta rovers and there's the summary 
So you're really doing some, if your class does this um, uh, exercise, uh, this, this uh, puzzle, then they will have revised a lot about mean, median, and mode, and it will seem to them to be fun, probably. Um, codes. Hmm. So what does this 1,994 plus 6,533, we add those up, we see we get 8,527. So okay. what's the hidden message? All right, the hidden message. Well, it says there's a key at the bottom. There's a key or code book at the bottom. Yes. So if you and so A is five, B is six, E is seven, and so on. So if I just substitute uh, one for F, nine is O for o T, foot. foot. Oh, I've got foot, foot, and this has been about football. What could the next one be? B is, oh, I'm going to guess. I'm going to say it's football. Uh, what's the last word, letter that, what's, what's the last word? A G, is G. Five um, a. Is oh, I'm, I'm going to guess it's game. And so if you it, yes, it out, football that, game. That's exactly what it is. Okay. <laughs> um, and this is a, a cryptogram. Um, it's um, a... The letters in foot plus ball equals game can be replaced by those numbers and the um, the sum, the arithmetic is correct. But there's a lot of interest in, in codes and secret codes. Um, and, of course, this is a very easy code. Um, but, uh, yes, that's a, that's a little exercise your class could do. Now, can we get other solutions to this um, puzzle? Can we find other substitutions which will, of the, of the um, numbers 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, up to 9, um, which will uh, make a sum here that's correct? Can we have the, the first one? So I can write that down to see if I come up with something different. Oh, Oh, that's different. Oh, that's okay. So here are three examples, okay? okay? But what we've done here is to make it easy for you by giving you some of the numbers. So the bottom one there um, isn't going to turn out to be 1994. I mean, um, if we go back to the one we just had a minute ago. Yeah, that's what I want to do. Write that down so that I'm not repeating. So I know I've got something new. 6533 three and 8527. But I've now got that all written down. So I know that T can't be four because that would be repeating. That well, would be something have, new. I might, have, I might have got that wrong. Um Actually, it is. It's a repeat of the one we've just had. Okay. Oh, okay. Yes. The T is for the um, the L is three and the E is seven. Oh, uh, that's it. There's actually something intriguing there because it's a little bit like Sudoku because but there's ten digits. There's zero. You can choose from ten digits: zero, one. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That's and the then, only way. Caroline, but, that's the only way. You can them out. But Sorry. That, well, yes, but that's the only way it's like Sudoku because here you've got some arithmetic involved. Oh, With sure. Sudoku, you're just you're just making lines and of uh, rows and columns of numbers and putting them in a three by three box. But what I mean is, you can eliminate all the numbers. That they absolutely can't be. So it can't be one, it can't be nine, it can't be six, it can't be five, it can't be three. Eight, five, oh, five is repeated. Mm, oh, we don't know what letter. So actually... Uh, a, oh. no, that's because there are two A's and two L's. Oh, okay, no, so so the pattern's the same. The pattern is the same. So, so five and... Two, so the uh, we have to choose from zero, four, and seven. So T, we can test T being zero, four, and seven, but it can't be zero because if it was zero, then L and E would be the same number, so it can't be zero. So that leaves four and seven. 
So could it be 1997 plus... Ah, uh, oh, no, because L has to be 3. Exactly. You know L's L 3. L has to be 3. Okay, so since L has to be 3, then there is only one solution yeah. to that one. So what she... So what you find is, once you've got one solution, you can often tweak it a little, just make a small change in one of the digits or one or two of the digits and find other solutions. And actually, there are 224 solutions here. So uh, you've got to, um, yeah, you, it's, it's, it's going to go on challenging you to find more and more or challenging your class or your group or your family to find more solutions if you're, you're interested. Um, there's another one on the right there, two, 2,997 plus 3,411. Oh, you're inside the picture. I see it. Yes, it's on the picture. Yeah. That gives you 6,408. Right. What I mean by two solutions the same, the 2004 solution can actually have 3,977 for ball or 3,677 for ball. So once you find one solution, it's worth playing around to see if you can tweak it a little and find other solutions. Right, yeah. And you can do the same as uh, you can basically you, the numbers that can't be are the two, the zero, and the four. Yes, exactly. And then the one zero zero seven solution, and also the what no, the the, um, the letters you're trying to replace. Well, you know L is eight. That's fine yes. because yeah, of we know L. Yeah, we know the other numbers can't be one, seven, two, and eight. And yeah. zero because those numbers are already used. Right. And so, but when you find the any one of the solutions listed in that on the right hand side of there, the one thousand and seven plus something, you see that there are four solutions that are all very much the same. So, if you look, if you look, you can quickly get more solutions this way. But, but as soon as you find one, yeah. But, and L, L. Oh no, we know L is eight. So actually, we know what the M, the M and the E are going to be nine and five every time, because uh, nine. Where did I get that from? One and five. Oh, my, my my brain's gone for a loop now. I'm I'm saying making the last one fifteen, and L is eight. That's why it's got to be nine and five every time. The answer is always going to be the last two digits are going to be nine and five. So it's only actually two, three, two letters that we need to work out after that. Yeah, yeah, and uh, there are there's only one solution with this um, one nine nine four. <laughs> yes, yes, I, I I managed to to conclude that because because L is three. Yeah, yeah. Now, actually, it turns out that the letter O can only take the values zero or nine. And the reasons are given here, but I don't think we want to dwell on it now. But if you think about it, um, you can probably work out why O can't be anything else other than zero or nine. And it's all to do with carrying numbers over when you add up, whether you carry over a, um, from the units to the tens or from the tens to the hundreds column. Um, so either one's carried over from the tens column to the hundreds column, or it isn't, and there are two possibilities. Right. And in one case, the, the letter O stands for nine, and the other case, it stands for zero. Anyway, all the solutions there and a pseudocode for writing a program to solve this puzzle are all on the Aiming High website. And... Um, if you do a bit more reasoning, you can find all the TL pairs uh, and then you can use those to find all the solutions. So you can, if you can split this work between 30 children in a class, nobody's having to do very much and you'll soon find your 20, um, your, all your solutions. Um, so 
that's another one. And so there's lots of there's lots of maths in in football. Um, there's another um, problem that uh, that I might might show you. I didn't make a slide for this, so I'm going to um, it's going going to get rid of this um, now and find the slide if I can um with it on I sh i'm just going to be you to talk caroline and i will find it while we're talking okay so i'm going to say that that um activity that tony suggested of working out why the o's can only be zero or nine is we haven't covered it but actually it's a very engaging activity and as Tony said, it's very helpful for working out and understanding place value. But it's 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 a very satisfying activity because you can start looking at it, going, "Yeah, well, you know, I don't know," or "or, or it's it's it does it matter?" I don't know. Lots of different things you could think. But when you actually get into doing it, and you realise that you've actually worked out that that zero and nine are the only possibilities. It's an incredibly satisfying activity. So I recommend that you actually have a go and, and prove to yourself, satisfy yourself that O can only be zero or nine. Well, the thing is, I like it because it's a logic puzzle. I mean, you've got to think logically, reason logically, um, to, to, I didn't want us to go too deep into this because this is a discussion about maths. We're not actually, it's not a lesson. We're not teaching, we're not aiming to teach anybody any maths. Um, but the, uh, point, as I pointed out, on the, you'll find it on the Aiming High web, website. It's called Football Challenge. And uh, just search for that and the key uh, and the search and you'll find all the solutions there. But it's, um, it is, I like it because it's a, a challenge that you can share with other people and everybody can contribute some of the solutions. And then, you know, between you, you can, you can provide, I like the idea of putting a poster on the wall in, in the classroom. And as soon as, some, as soon as somebody finds a solution nobody else has found, then you put it then you put it on the poster. And also, once you've got solutions, you can begin to organize them in a systematic way. So either you can think of your system that's going to um, you know provide pathways to finding the solutions or you can your learners or your participants can do some trial and error and then they they can start to oh this is a solution this is a solution this is a solution how can we arrange them arrange them in a pattern um, to show how the sort of different sets of solutions like what like the sets I, I showed on the slide. So Caroline, what do you think about this problem? No answers given. And it says put your solutions in the comments, which you can do now, or this is going to be on the AIMSEC Facebook page tomorrow, and you can put your solutions there. Um, this is a nice make it Team may gets 11 points. No answers given. Okay, yeah, you keep talking. I'll, I'll be working it out. Let's have a look. Team A gets 11 points from playing seven games. What are the possible numbers of games it could have lost? Now, we've got to work this out knowing that teams get three points for a win, one for a draw, and no points if they lose. Oh, so these aren't goals. Sorry, that's a distinction there. These aren't goals. These are points. Sorry. So they get three points if they win. Two points for a draw. For a draw and no points if they lose. Oh, and it says it underneath the picture. Of course it does. So no points if they lose. And they get they're getting eleven points. So six, 
to um, how what's and the question is what are the possible number of gains it could have lost? Right, I, I have to sit down and, and do this over a cup of tea, Tony. I wouldn't certainly wouldn't be able to work that out just off the top of my head right now live. Well, let's do, let's do, let's let's do it by trial and error, Caroline. Oh, I can do that. Yes. Well, I've started to do that. Yeah. So that's the best idea. So team, oh, that's that. I'm glad because that's what I was doing. So team A gets eleven points, seven games. So let's say, let's say they they can't have won all eleven, but if they drew to get eleven points, if they drew. If they won three and drew one, they would get eleven points. Yes, but how many um, how many games? So so how many games would they lose then? So that would that would leave them with three games lost in that situation. Win three, draw one, lose. That would be lose three. Um, they if they won two. I think Sorry? that's the solution, Caroline. Win three and draw one. Ah, oh, no, that's only 10 points. That's not 11 points. Really? So that's nine. It's win three is nine points. Draw one is two points. I make that 11 points. No, they get one point for a draw. I wrote two points for a draw in my notes. So... Um, that would be so, okay. so it would be win win three draw two so that would be lose two and that's and what, the solution you've got one right away I've got one yeah so what happens okay. if they what happens if they win four if they win four we we go over the top there's too many points so it's not, we can't do that so that's no good what so happens? we can't do four what about two if they win two. If they won two, that would be six points. They'd have to draw five and lose none. But that would only be seven games. Oh, that would yes, be right. That's it. Seven and, games. Yes. yes. So they win two, that's six points. Draw five, that's um, five points. Six and five is 11. And then they will not lose no games. That lose no games. And if they have got two solutions. Okay, so what if they win one? Then there's not enough games for that to work. If they win one, that's three, and even if they drew on the remainder, that's only six. That's nine. So actually, the only solution is that they won three, drew two, and lost two. Okay, so we that's right. So so this is such a nice problem because it's something that needs you to think and think logically, but you actually can easily do it by trial and error. So it's, what about the yeah, second? I did it live <laughs> under all the pressure. So yes, it's what about the second of, one? It gave me a lot of reassurance that I, I I was okay if I did it by trial and error. So that's nice. And then once I started working on it, then the answer just came. So that was nice. Thank you, Tony. Sorry. What about doing... no, trial a second one? Okay. So team B loses its first game, but it gets 14 points from playing eight games in all. So that's 14 points from seven games. Or is it 14 points from, is there a total of nine games? Eight games and here. Total. For me, it says eight games. Yes, but it loses its first game. All right, so the, so it's going to get so we've got seven more games in which okay, case. so it's it's okay. So I'm just going to focus on that. We've got seven games and fourteen points. So let's go with what we did before. If they won, they could win four. Could they win five? Five threes are fifteen. Let's go with that. So win five. That's fifteen. That's too many points. So oh my goodness, I was looking at seventeen. So win. Four, four times three is 12, right. So, and then if they drew two, that's six, and then they could lose one. That would be, a, and then they'd already lost one, so they lose a total of two, and that's an earlier loss of one. So, so that's you that saying work. four wins, that's 12 points, mm -hmm. two draws, 
right? That's two points. And two losses. Two losses. Yeah, got... two losses, including the first one that we already know about, yeah. Yeah, so, so that's one solution. Now, are there any other solutions? Okay, so if they won three, that would be nine points. And they got 14 points, so they've got to get another five points. So they'd have to draw five. So that's five, eight, not, not enough. No, they'd, they'd need to, they, to do that. They'd have to play because they lost one already. They'd have to play eight, so, nine matches. And yeah, that does, that's not, so there's only one solution. So, yeah. And that's, that. what is the question? How many games did it win? And that the answer is four. Yes. Yes. So that was a nice question, I thought. Because I, it's I agree. Really I easy, agree. But yeah. really easy, but but you've got to think. <laughs> yeah. And the maths is, is highly um, you know, the maths isn't scary at all. But you've also got to get it right. There's me going, Oh yes, if I have five games, that's gonna give me <laughs> so I've got over the top already and didn't realise it and all of that. So it's useful to have the, the double checking going on. But I think we've come to the end of our hour, Caroline. I've enjoyed that thoroughly. Thank you, Tony. I, I like being um, being made to think, and it wasn't it wasn't like really big brain thinking. It was just nice little puzzles and with very satisfying solutions. Thank you. Okay, so goodbye, everybody. Goodbye. goodbye. We'll see you next week. Happy Maths Hour every Monday at five o'clock UK time, and thank you for joining us. Thank you very much, Tony.